we have a new coach uh, after we lost uh, Sebastian De Sabre and um, now we have John uh, McKinstry, uh, the Northern Irishman. Um, what do you think of his credentials? Uh, first of all, uh, if given by the ratio, two out of three, if you want to be the next Uganda Cranes coach, you should go and coach Rwanda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jonathan McKinstry, uh, Northern Irish, 34 year old, uh, an implication that is younger. Uh, than some of the Cranes players in the courts uh, has been named the no 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 some by the some 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 if not most uh, so he's in charge he takes over from uh, Sebastian De Sabre on a permanent basis he will be assisted uh, for starters by Abdalam Biru and uh, Charles Livingstone Babas uh, what they said is the fact that uh, uh, the current technical team that has been on interim since uh, the Sable left will be the one that he works with until after some time, maybe when he gets his own uh, team. But within, from those I guess, I, I don't think it will change a lot. Uh, we were thinking about uh, Ibrahim Mogisha Jawara. They work together in Rwanda uh, for some time and uh, he's a goalkeeping coach and is uh, in the country uh, for so long a time now. Uh, for so long a time now, uh, but uh, he's not been named as part of uh, these guys, maybe in the near future, because uh, Chris have never had uh, uh, two assistants. Now, given that Mbiru is there and Charles Livingstone Babas is there, uh, it will be tough uh, to know if they, they will uh, keep the uh, technical staff expanded as well. Uh, but going to McKinstry, the person, he did some good job with Rwanda. Uh, if you remember, uh, was it Sekafa 2017? Uh, Sekafa 2015. Uh, that was in Ethiopia. Uh, he did well. I remember Uganda knocked out Rwanda in the semi-finals, if I have not forgotten. Uh, but he was, uh, he's a coach. You could, see you could see something. And uh, if you compare Rwanda and Uganda in terms of talent, uh, they cannot match Uganda slightly, not even, uh, uh, there is no debate. Yeah. Uganda has produced more good players and talented players, uh, technically gifted than Rwanda, but he was trying to do it with the uh, guys there, and you could see there was progress. Uh, then he left and uh, uh, joined uh, Saif's side in Bangladesh. Uh, he did wonders there. Uh, more points, more goals scored, more everything they had never attained. Uh, so under him, uh, they achieved more. Uh, he became the coach of Sierra Leone before Rwanda, by the way, at the age of 27. And uh, this reminds me of coach Mike Mutebi. Uh, it said that Mike Mutebi started coaching at the age of 27 uh, when uh, uh, he got an accident. I remember uh, there were far gunshots that ended his playing career as a rebel, as he wants to <laughs> term it. Uh, so this is a young coach. Yeah. Uh, so one that is uh, very ambitious. Uh, he comes to a country uh, that has already achieved something, uh, which means you have to do more than uh, what Mitchell did, because what Mitchell did was to qualify the country for the Africa Cup of Nations, and then the Sabre comes, takes the uh, team uh, closer, uh, 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 improved by uh, reaching the group, uh, yeah, past group stages. Of course, uh, we shall have arguments about uh, the fact that these are 24 teams, uh, but he did that. Uh, he leaves. Uh, Abdalambiru uh, has been in charge uh, as interim uh, for four competitive games, three competitive yeah. games. Yeah. Uh, won all, including two away from home. Yeah. He's only played one game at home, uh, including friendlies and then Kosafa. Yeah. He's not lost any game in the 90 minutes, uh, so, which means you're replacing a coach or taking over from an interim yeah. who also did a very, very good job. Yeah. Because as we speak now, uh, we're close to qualifying for a fifth consecutive chan. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, with or without a McKinstry, uh, I think we're already there, winning 3-0 in Bujumbura. I'm one of the people who thought Fufa would let Mubiru complete his job. Yes. Complete his job. And uh, away from even completing his job, uh, being the local uh, coach here that manages the cranes, because we've seen countries like uh, Cameroon, uh, Egypt, South Africa, uh, the main coaches don't do anything with the chant sides and it has worked uh, maybe we also need to look at that uh, but away from that uh, his ambitions uh, for starters he said i want to take uganda to the world cup 
We've been to the Africa Cup of Nations, reached the finals, yes, we've not won it yet. Yeah. We've been there twice in succession, and I think we shall be going there more you often. have been to AFCON twice in succession. Yeah, twice in succession, yeah. but of course... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, and I will be in more AFCONs. I don't think I'll never miss any AFCON again, as long as we still have Kao around, uh, that I'm sure. Uh, so, by saying he wants to take Uganda to the World Cup, not 2026, 20, not 2031, not that he wants to take Uganda to the World Cup. He wants to take Uganda to the World Cup in 2022. That's the next World Cup. We don't know the draw, we don't know who we shall be playing, but... That just tells you the ambitions yeah, of the course that we, yeah, yeah we're getting. Uh, the big question remains: Does he find the same national team? That's a question that we shall know in the near future. Because going by whatever is happening, uh, Denison Nyango, even if he doesn't uh, uh, resign or retire, uh, there is that time is going to go. Uh, I don't think he has uh, more than five years left, and not even two. Because any time soon he may be retiring. Hassan was the same, Emmanuel Okui. But of course, uh, the team that is coming up uh, looks en uh, energetic, uh, fresh blood. Uh, does he work with those? In the press conference, he said he gives chance to everyone. It does not matter the age. But if you prove, uh, he's a good choice. He's been in East Africa, he's been in Africa. And uh, even finance wise, I don't think he's as expensive as Lok Eymar, one of so the. Yeah, yeah, I think we'll, we, we shall pay him. And uh, given the fact that uh, if you look at the previous Uganda Cranes coaches that have come here, paid or not, they've got bigger offers elsewhere after doing a good job here. He's sure if I do a good job here, I'll get offers. I'll get offers. Uh, so that's also another side of the coin uh, because I have a feeling Rwanda was even paying more than we are paying. Uh, he left Rwanda, he went to Bangladesh, he's been in Sierra Leone. Of course, his CV is uh, not so pregnant, uh, but uh, that was the same thing with uh, Sebastian de Sabra as well. And uh, I, have, uh, I get a feeling he will do the job. He will do the job. Uh, my worry is uh, we will have to wait for the draw for the Africa Cup of uh, Men World Cup because that's the target that is given himself. And also, how do players react to him? Uh, that's another thing. Because every time there is a change of coach, sometimes some players will go, some will stay. Uh, of course, not by retiring, but within the uh, philosophy of the coach. Uh, in his uh, words, he seems to be uh, the one that uh, emphasizes free-throwing football. And he has a backing of the technical team uh, that has Abdallah Mbiru and Charles Livingstone in Babazi. Same philosophy. Uh, we, I had issues with Sebastian Di Sabri. He always preached what he never, he always preached what he never practiced until the Africa Cup of Nations, where we played those four games. Uh, but I have uh, hope in McKinstry. Uh, he has a very, very, very good backroom staff. In my opinion, he will do the job. All right. Um, so yes. Um, Hopefully we, we, we get to achieve more. Uh, we hope that uh, John McKinstry performs uh, better than the other coaches have done and reaches you know, higher levels.